Hey guys and girls, I'm James and welcome to the channel. Today is part two of my review of the Holy Stone HS720G. If you saw part one, I go in depth in the app and some different aspects of the drone. But today we're going to go over the flight characteristics of the drone. How the follow me works, how far will it go, how long will it fly, and how long of a flight time you get, and how does it fly. So it's an upgrade of the 720E that was very popular and a lot of drone YouTubers said it was the best value at $299. Kind of like when they upgraded the 700D to the 700E in two Two years guys this one is w a way better improvement over this one this was my first holy stone drone and i reviewed over 20 holy stone drones i still think this one might be my favorite i think that'll have to be my next video comparing the 700 e to the 720 g even though this one doesn't have a multiple like to skimble this is a really solid flyer guys drone years are like dog years two years can be a big difference i heard someone the other day they go that's so 2020 <laughs> so two years later they came out with this one and this was a major improvement so that's kind of how they've done from the e to the g model when you first look at them the first noticeable difference is the camera this is a multiple axis gimbal the 720e it is a one axis gimbal and it goes up and down and it does have image stabilization but when you tilt it your horizon is going to tilt so it doesn't really give you a really good cinematic shot where this one when it rolls the camera stays still it doesn't have the pan axis but it goes up and down and it roll left and right which really gives you a much better cinematic shot. But that's not even the major difference. The major difference between these two drones is this one went on a major diet. This one weighs 478 grams and this one's 361 grams. And look at the size of the motors. You may say this one's a lot slower. No, this one's 23 miles an hour and this one's 20 miles an hour because I tested it on my last video. Uh, the only thing that's missing is the light. If you're going on a diet, sometimes you gotta make sacrifices, which I never really use the light anyway. How often do you fly at night? And if you look at the batteries, look how tiny this battery is compared to the other one. But this one's a 2800 milliwatt amp battery and this one's a 2950. Look at the weight savings of this one. This one's 153 grams and this one's 110. So you may be thinking, well, it doesn't fly as long. Well, you'll see at the end, you'll be surprised how long this thing flies. It's a, that's one thing I gotta really give it to this drone. It can stay in the air a really long time. I was amazed. Matter of fact, I got bored sitting there trying to wait for it to land. I've always said that Holy Stone makes the best beginner drone, which is the HS210. Uh, there's one out there I like a little bit more, but guys, the best value out there right now is Holy Stone's latest drone, the HS430. And with my 25% off discount code, I'll put it below. And I mentioned that in the review of this drone, but this thing has a 1080p camera, really good flight time, flies fantastic. And for $40, if you're wanting your first drone, this should be your first drone to learn the orientation of a drone. So guys, Holy Stone does send me nice hats and shirts and they've all these drones, but they have no input on what I say. So all of this is what I really believe in. Matter of fact, they didn't like some of my videos. They asked me to take them down, but I said, no, don't sell that drone no more. Just sell these good ones. First of all, we're gonna do follow me and see how it tracks me and then we'll see how far it flies and then we'll see how long the battery lasts and how long the flight time you get and the overall flight characteristics of the drone. So let's go put her up in the air. All right, guys and girls, so first we're gonna, but first of all, let's do return to home. Um, I've got my little landing pad here that'll give it a pretty good target. It's actually for my Inspires. <laughs> so let's see if we can send her out, maybe, you know, across the pond and fly around a little bit and see if she returns to home and can hit this pad. It's really, really windy out here. So we're gonna take her off. Let's see how she does in the wind. One thing I always like to do as soon as I take, like, take a drone off is send it up about 15, 20 feet, give it a couple seconds, and that lets the satellites really lock in and it locks into its return to home. Also, it's really important to have some type of landing pad so it, for the camera and the sensors to have something to look at versus just looking at all green or all brown or wherever you're at. It's fighting that wind really good. All right, let's send her out. We've got uh, 15 satellites. So this is really, all right. So we are at, how far away are we? We are at uh, only 94 feet. So, so here we go. We're gonna hit return to home and see how she does. Hopefully I have the return to home uh, settings correct for the height. So I have the height 
It says 5649. It's coming down a little bit. It's doing fantastic. What you want to do is make sure you have your return to home set higher than all the trees around you. Because if you've got it below the, the trees, then you could be in big trouble. All right, so she's coming down. Let's see how she does. I think she's going to miss it. Hey, that's pretty close, all right? That's within like three feet. All right. So there's return to home. It's really windy, guys. And it, it, flew, it flies fantastic. Okay, so now we're gonna do um, point of interest. All right, so let's, let's put her back up in the air. We're gonna back her up. Move her away from the tree, go a little bit higher. I'm gonna hit record on the, I wanna record this. So this is what you see in your phone. The video from the drone is much better. I'll show that to you in a minute. But if you look at my height, I'm at 13 meters, but my distance is only, I think, set at five when I hit a point of interest. So what you need to do is go into settings and change that into a wider prospect, like a 15, even a 30, 40 millimeter. Also, I don't have the camera pointed down. So here, I'll point the camera down and then it's doing point of interest. Uh, look how windy it is. So this is the best cinematic shot I got the other day because look at that pond, there's absolutely no wind. So the horizon stays completely flat with the multiple axis gimbal, but when you try to turn it, you're gonna get a little bit of a shakiness. But the color saturation is really good on this drone. That little bit of jerkiness is probably me with the sticks going forward too fast. Um, also, there was no waypoints or uh, tap to fly on the app. I deleted it and reinstalled it and it just wasn't there. But I don't know who would want to use that on a drone that doesn't have obstacle avoidance and doesn't have very long range. Uh, you're just asking for trouble. It's better just to uh, fly line of sight and be safe. Uh, I'm really impressed with the camera and especially how long the battery lasts. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but let's try to follow me now. All right, so as soon as you get the Wi-Fi and everything working on the app, you hit the four little boxes and it'll pull up the follow me and you swipe it and it'll start following your device. Um, some drones follow the remote, not this one. It's a Wi-Fi drone, so it's gonna follow what it's hooked up to the Wi-Fi too, which is your phone. And of course, Wi-Fi's don't have very long range, so you gotta kinda keep it close to you, uh, point it down to you like I do here, if you wanna see what you're doing, or you can have it uh, pointed straight ahead. Uh, it's really windy, look at that tree, but um, it does a really good job. At a walking pace or something like that. Later I tried my motorcycle and tried going like 15 and it, it kind of kept losing me. So it, uh, at a good slow pace or even a bicycle, I think it would follow you. But again, this does not have obstacle avoidance. So be really careful when it's following you that it doesn't run into something. Uh, I don't even trust any obstacle avoidance on any drone except for the Skydio and that thing's amazing, but that's a couple grand. So with any functions on this drone, if you want it to stop, um, open the four boxes again and just hit uh, follow me button. You don't have to swipe it, it'll just, it'll stop or just hit return to home, or just push on one of the sticks. Um, here I push return to home and it lands right in the middle. I mean, look at this, you can see by the camera that it lands right in the middle. So I do get on my motorcycle and try to get it to follow me, but um, right after I take it off, it almost hits a mailbox and I'm thinking, this is not a good idea. I'll just stick to flying it. So in part one, I go over all the aspects of the drone and the app. So, but real quick, if you look up, the green light means you have plenty of satellites. It'll go red if you don't. If you look next to the satellite symbol, I have 17 satellites. It tells you the battery on the drone, the battery on the remote. If you're connected, uh, if you're recording the settings and everything, the return to home and the takeoff is on your left, along with those four little things. But go back to part one if you want to see that. And then the little slider on the right is uh, for moving the gimbal up and down. All right, so next me and William get together and we actually have walkie talkies and he goes way far away thinking I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna put this thing out a thousand meters and that's what it's supposed to do. Uh, but before I start, let me say I live in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, which is one of the most congested airspaces uh, in the nation. So there's all kinds of signal interference. I mean, there's seven and a half million people that live here. So there's all kinds of interference. I'm sure if you're out in the country, you're probably gonna get twice as far range as I do. But again, this is a Wi-Fi drone. It's connected to your Wi-Fi. So your device and how good it's connected to it is gonna have a lot to do with it also. But I also wanna point out that in the United States, we have beyond visual line of sight laws. So you can only fly your drone as far as you can see it. So uh, 
you know, if I'm flying the Inspire 2, that's about a mile, mile and a half. But on these little smaller drones, I have really three or 400 meters and you can't see them. Uh, so if you get caught by the FAA, you could be, also if you're part 107 and you get caught breaking the rules by the FAA, they can take your license. And if that's what you do for a living, you're in big trouble. So always check your maps to make sure before you push a drone to the edge of beyond visual line of sight to make sure the maps are working. Because if you lose connection and you lose a camera, you need to use those maps to bring the drone back. Another thing to do is if you ever lose line of sight and the maps aren't working, look down at your meters. Uh, I had that happen before and just push forward. And if the number's getting bigger, that means it's going away from you. Uh, see the distance meters? And so uh, just make sure that those numbers start getting smaller if you ever become disconnected and return to home doesn't work. So look, I only go out about 250 meters, 260 meters, and it starts jamming on me. And uh, I'm in a highly populated area. I don't want to lose connection. I've done it before and had a drone fly away and, and I live close to a highway. You know, what if you lose your drone and it goes down in the middle of a highway? That'd be really dangerous. So really all I got out of this one was about 250 meters. Um, so next we're doing the battery test. So this is the one that blew me away. So the camera's really good. I love the multiple axis gimbal, but the main thing that's really impressive with this drone is the diet. So I'm not gonna sit there and make you watch the whole time I'm watch, flying this thing, but I was blown away at about the 20 minute mark, it still had four bars. So finally it went down to three bars. And the only problem I have with it is that when it dropped to two bars, it dropped to one within 15 seconds and it landed like another 15 seconds. So that's not good. It doesn't have a battery meter on it, but I got an amazing 23 and a half minutes out of this drone. Uh, we did put the 720E up on and test it and it got about 18 and a half minutes. And for being two years old, that means it hasn't really lost very much battery life for being two years old because that's about what I was getting from the 720E about two years ago. But this one got a full 23 and a half minutes. Um, of course, I'm not, you know, flying it hard. I'm just kind of making it hover. Uh, but I just want to keep my eyes on the iPad to see the timer and see how it's doing. So I think I'm going to go do a YouTube live because if I hadn't seen this, I wouldn't have believed it. Usually when a manufacturer says that a drone gets about 23 minutes or 24 minutes, it really gets about 18. So let me say too that all drones kind of have their quirkiness. Even the really expensive ones, they all fly a little bit different. But if you've been flying really cheap drones and you fly this, you're gonna love it because it just is rock solid. Is it the best $300 drone out there? No, there's probably better ones, but I gotta give it to Holy Stone for really improving the craft every single time. It's a great value for $300 for what it does. Uh, but Holy Stone really makes the best $40 to $100 drones bar none. But they keep improving. So let me say too that all drones kind of have their quirkiness. Even the really expensive ones, they all fly a little bit different. But if you've been flying really cheap drones and you fly this, you're gonna love it. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching part two of my review of the Holy Stone HS720G. Um, in part one, I did, if you missed it, I go over the app and everything and how to get the Wi-Fi done and how to get it calibrated and how to get the remote connected to the drone, the compass calibrated, the Wi-Fi working and all the aspects of the app. But today we went over the flight characteristics. So one thing I didn't like about this drone again was, and I mentioned it, was it took forever to, for, to go down to two bars and as soon as it went down to one bar, it landed. So if you've been in flying this thing for 20 minutes, it's time to bring it back because it doesn't give you a battery percentage. So it's hard to go by the, the lights in the back. So when it starts getting down, to, if it ever gets to two bars, it's time to bring it back. Don't wait till it gets down to one bar. Um, it flies really solid. You saw it. There's no toilet bowling. It was rock solid compared to this one. I had a love-hate relationship with this one. Sometimes this was rock solid and sometimes it just kind of gave me a few issues. It, I never crashed it or anything like that and it, it always performed. But this one's rock solid. Is it as, I mean, could you make a living out of this drone? No, it's still a budget beginner drone at $300, but you can have a lot of fun with this drone and you can get some, take it on vacation and get some really cool shots with the multiple axis gimbal now. The 4K camera, it gives you really nice pictures and video now. Where this one would just give you really nice pictures, this one now will give you nice pictures and nice video. So guys, if you got something out of this, please like and subscribe as always, and I'll see you in the next one.